Hi! Okay, so let me just start by saying that this video should have come out sooner, but then life happened. So sorry, I was kind of just out of it for a few days, but this is my return to form. I am back and here for you. Thankfully, there was a lot of wine left over from the holidays and I was drinking wine and watching The View. Do any of you watch The View? <laughs> if you watch that show, please let's be friends. <laughs> there is nothing like watching five best friends who have nothing in common with one another. Anyway, sorry for taking so long. Better late than never. Here I am. Today, of all days, we are going to be talking about the best books of 2020. We talked about the most surprising, we talked about the worst, links to those down in the description, and today we are going to be talking about the best books of last year. The best books of the worst year. Shall we begin? So I am going to be starting off with some honorable mentions real quick. The Whisper Man by Alex North. I have a vlog about it where I talk about it. Go watch that vlog. Link in description. Good stuff. Loved it. The Passengers by John Mars. This book says things about cancel culture. Fuck cancel culture. If you want a full video on this book because I can go on a complete rant about how awesome the messages of this book is, please message me or comment down below. Let me know and I shall deliver. His and Hers by Alice Feeney. This is a thriller that I found to be so unpredictable and I was on the edge of my seat, unable to guess. If any of you were able to guess that ending, you're lying, okay? You're just flat out lying. If anyone was able to actually guess the ending of this book, you are a genius and a master of thrillers and good luck finding enjoyment in any thriller because you're just gonna be guessing and you're not gonna be surprised. If, you, if you're that good, you're not gonna be surprised. Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston and Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. Now, I hate romance. These are two romances that don't suck at not that there's anything wrong with that, but these two books were not ones that pissed me off. Very good stuff, we stand. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Judging by the title, I too was like, Why? And the genre, YA, I was like, Why? Do I really want to? And I read the book and I was like, oh, sequel, now, please, thank you. So with that all out of the way, I am now gonna get into the top 10 best books of the worst year. At number 10, we have Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. There is no year that is complete without a Riley Sager book. Every single year that I read a Riley Sager book, his book always made it to the best of the year. This was my most anticipated book of the year and it did not disappoint. I read it the day it came out and I read it in one sitting. His books have the tendency to make people want to do that. Riley Sager has proved once again that he is just so gifted at crafting fast-paced thrillers with flawed characters and genuinely interesting stories. Four books so far, and although very different, none of them waver in terms of enjoyment. This author is so talented, and this talent thus far has not been a fluke. I actually have a full spoiler talk on this book, which I'm gonna link down below. Click it. And if anything, this book makes me just so excited for his new one this year called Survive the Night, so I'm just... Yes, 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 yes. The next book I'm gonna talk about is a book that I read very early this year, and this was my favorite book of the year for quite a while, and that is Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. This is one of those books that really, really stuck with me. It is one of the darkest and most thrilling thrillers I have ever read. The writing is amazing. The way Karen Slaughter explores the relationship between these two sisters will pretty much have you in tears by the end because it's so good. The reason I picked this book up is because whenever I saw it on booktube, I would just hear the most crazy things about it. I would hear that it was super dark, that it was super disturbing, that it really pushed the envelope. So part of the reason I wanted to read this book was because I wanted to see how far she would push it. I wanted to see how far she was willing to go to make me regret purchasing the book. No regrets, five stars, one of the best books I have read all year. The next book is also a doozy. Number eight, I have The Troop by Nick Cutter. Oh my gosh. Like Pretty Girls, this is one really gnarly and fucked up tome. Also like Pretty Girls, it is another book that doesn't rely exclusively on gore and shock value to tell a compelling story. It reminded me so much, if I were to compare it to another book, of Lord of the Flies by William Golding. Can you imagine making students read this book? Like that would be, depending on the student, you would either be the worst teacher or the best teacher. If my teacher made us read this instead of like fucking The Giver or freaking whatever else I had to fucking read back in like eighth grade, I would be that teacher's friend to the end, all the way to the end, okay? The trend is books that if I were to recommend to someone, they would think I was crazy. And if you recommend this book to someone, make sure that this person is a close friend of yours because this, oh my goodness, this Cows by, hi, Ringy, do that, can we? Cows by Matthew Stokey. Oh boy, 
If you know, you know, I so far don't know anyone who has read this book. I'm kind of alone in my, in the horrific experience I had reading this book. This book makes the last two books, The Troop and Pretty Girls, in case you weren't paying attention, look like children's books. This is easily one of the most fucked up, depraved, disgusting books that I have ever read, and I kind of loved it a lot. Obviously, it's number seven. I don't know what's wrong with me, but most of all, I don't know what's wrong with this fucking author. Oh my goodness, the things that happen in this book. It is insane in the membrane, okay? But it's also done in such a way that really lends itself to service a genuinely creative plot that actually has stuff to say, stuff that I found compelling. So the next book I'm gonna talk about at number six is a horror book in the truest sense of the word because I was scared reading this, and that is The Patient by Jasper Dewitt. This book scared the f crap out of me. When I was reading this book that night, I tried to go to bed and I felt a presence in my room I don't know if it was sleep paralysis, but you, okay, you know the thing with sleep paralysis? It's like, people give testimonies, people talk about what they felt when they were going through sleep paralysis, and they say that like, you know, I have one friend who said that she saw like a headless man or a headless woman, I have another guy who said that he saw like, you know, oh, a spirit outside the window, I'm like, why is it like that? Like, why can't like, you know, our bodies be kind to us and show us like, you know, a hot naked man, you know, or <laughs> like a full buffet, a full Thanksgiving buffet. Like, why does it always have to be scary? Why can't we have good sleep paralysis, right? Like, why does the world have to be so sad? And why do our bodies have to be so unfair? <laughs> Anywho, that was very random of me. Where am I? Number five. So at number five, I have Wolf Song by TJ Klune. Oh my goodness. This was such a surprise. First time I heard about this book was when one of my favorite booktubers was giving it a one star on her wrap up. I was like, what? And she described the plot. I panic bought the book. I was like, oh my goodness, I need this book right now. So I will willingly admit that I was quite weirded out by the first hundred or so pages, but at the end I was just like, stan, stan, stan. TJ Klune was like werewolves, but make it very gay. And I was like, thank you. This book was the best thing I never knew I needed. And at number four, I have so much love for this book and this whole series in general. This was such a lovely surprise and I am so honored to give love to this series because this series really did help me get through 2020. And I have not finished this series yet. I'm still reading the last book now, so it's kind of helping me get through this year, which started off pretty rough too. And that is Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas. I adored this book so much. This was beautiful and big and epic. And the whole Throne of Glass series is one that doesn't have a very good reputation on booktube, I don't think. Like, many people don't like it. This is honestly probably the longest fantasy series I have read so far. This book, Queen of Shadows, was by far the most epic one in the story. It started off so strong. Like, book three, Air of Fire, ended on such a oh my gosh note, and this book started off on such an oh my gosh note, and it just felt so complete as a book, like it ended, ugh. <laughs> so many plot twists, I love the characters, I love the world, I love everything, I love Selena, she's such a bitch, I love her. I don't watch sports, but reading this book was like how I can imagine someone watching a football game, I was like fist pumping and like cheering and getting up and saying and yelling and cheering. Very geeky reference coming up, the way one reacts when they watch an Attack on Titan episode, which I love that anime, by the way. I highly stand Attack on Titan. But the way I am when I watch Attack on Titan was the way I was when I was reading this book. It was just beautiful. So good, so good. At number three, I have The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Wow, you guys, just wow. I, oh my gosh, this book was so good. And you know that I am a huge fan of The Goldfinch, but I love this one way more. And what I also love was watching the interviews that Donna Tartt would give, the few interviews that she would give. She's just such an interesting person. I want to be best friends with her. I want to read every single thing that she puts out. I am desperate to read The Little Friend by Donna Tartt. I don't care how bad everyone says that book is. I just want to spend time with her writing. It's just oh, so good. It is a murder mystery. It is psychological. It's literary fiction with murder. Truly adore this book so much. There is so much I love about this book that I am thinking of doing a full video on it. If you want to see a video of that sort, kindly let me know. So now we are going to get into the top two books. Drum roll, please. I was struggling so hard to decide whether I liked one or the other more. At number two, my second favorite book of 2020 is Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Basterica. I have a full video on this book. I 
adored this book so much. This is Aldous Huxley with Cannibalism, period. That is the best way I can describe this book. And you know how much I loved Brave New World, another book that I gave five stars to. One of my favorite classics of all time. This book is like that book, but with gore and horror and cannibalism. And it's a translated work from Argentina. It is just so good. I think this book is a modern day masterpiece. I love it so much. Amazing book. So, any guesses? I feel like at this point, I'm just gonna be stating the obvious. You haven't seen it on this list yet, here it is. I'm just gonna state the obvious. The best book I have read in the year 2020 is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. This book rocked my world. I clearly could not stop talking about this book on this channel because I have four videos on it as of now, four videos and counting. I read this book months ago and it has not left my head yet. <laughs> Look, I adore the hell out of this book. I love it so much. I love it with all my heart. It's just so special to me. I have a full video on it, which I'm gonna link in the description. I also have a full video on the film, which I also loved. Link in the description. And yeah, those were my favorite books of the year 2020. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. You know the drill. Like and comment and subscribe. Share this video with your friends and I will love you forever. I hope we manage to find happiness in 2021, no matter how big, no matter how small. I love you all so damn much. Heart. Heart. Anyway, I hope to see you soon in the next video, but until then, take care of yourselves, take care of yourselves, be happy, see ya!